White House officials insist these new policies reflect existing but largely unenforced federal immigration law. The new priorities are deportation of those with criminal records and much swifter procedures to expedite those deportations. We're getting really bad dudes out of this country. Ultimately, anyone who is found in an undocumented status uh, would ultimately be apprehended and deported with due process totally eroded under the proposals that I'm hearing about. It's a military operation because uh, what has been allowed to come into our country, when you see gang violence that you've read about like never before and all of the things, much of that is people that are here illegally. We're going to build the wall. We have no choice. We have no choice. Build that wall. 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 So, we're going to build it. Who's going to pay for the wall? 100%. By the way. Under the Trump administration, there has been a renewed focus on immigration enforcement, and that was clear in January when he issued a series of executive orders dealing with the border wall, for example, and um, increasing the number of immigration officers that would be hired both for um, ICE and for Border Patrol. ICE stands for Immigration and Customs Enforcement. And these are the officers that are empowered to um, detain people and initiate deportation if they're undocumented. Pursuant to their own internal policies, ICE won't go into uh, an elementary school to arrest uh, a parent or a teacher, for example. What they'll do is they'll wait outside. We turn now to a case in Los Angeles where ICE officials tore a child away from her father as he was taking her to school. Hi, my name is Fatima Velika and I'm 13 years old. On a Tuesday morning, February 28th, my dad was detained in front of me on my way to school. The family says he was less than two blocks away from the school at the time of the arrest. Immigration attorneys and advocates fear the arrest signals a shift in ICE's long-standing policy against conducting enforcement activities at so-called sensitive locations like schools, churches and hospitals. Avelica Gonzalez's arrest comes amidst growing fears of mass deportations under President Trump. Now my family and I are living day by day to see what happens next. My dad has lived here more than he has lived in Mexico. He knows life here. Me and my sisters are not willing to go back to Mexico. We're here to stay. What would maximize our protection of our people in this larger environment that feels unsafe for many and is interpreted by many as unconstitutional.
This is a public safety for all resolution that articulates our role in maintaining peace and order. We are stating that keeping a registry, bypassing due process, investigating or seeking information about immigration status when it is not directly relevant to the investigation at hand undermines the effectiveness of local law enforcement. We will not dedicate local resources or personnel to do the work of federal law enforcement. This does not require our public safety to do anything different than they are already doing, nor does it require them to go outside of existing immigration law or the Constitution, nor does it do this for departments or agencies. And that is exceptionally important. We did not step out, outside the bounds of anything legal. We're, we're simply stating what already exists and best practices. We're now going to proceed to privilege of the floor for the public. Today I talked, I was talking to my son about, you know, this proposal and um, how he felt about it. And we did a little digging and found that this is not going to work. During President Eisenhower's time period, um, there was a very similar um, immigration procedure in place. It was called Operation Wetback. And basically what was going on was they were deporting anyone who did not look American. And a lot of the people who were deported were American. It didn't work then. 88 people died. And it's not going to work now. They were so overtaxed with communities trying to get rid of these people who they felt were dangerous to their communities. And they were there just doing the work that none of us were willing to do. So as we talked, he had a great point. And I said, you should come tonight and talk. And he said, no. And the reason he decided not to come was, this is your generation's problem. You still haven't figured out how to live with others that aren't like you. And the next generation is being influenced by your failure to overcome this problem. Please, let me go home and tell my son we have not failed. Thank you. Anyone else who would like to speak before we go to a vote? Uh, let's have a roll call vote, please. Mr. Stein? Aye. Mr. Burbank? Yes. Ms. Chuck? C. Si. Mr. Dennis? Yes. Mr. John? Yes. Ms. Callis? Yes. Ms. Keeper? Well, uh, I came, first of all, I came out of Chile in 1976, in August, uh, and due to um, the military takeover that happened in 1973, uh, after spending three years as prisoner of the military. I'm here because of a, con of a consequence. I'm, a, I'm a, here as a consequence of a military takeover. Uh, and I never really um, identified the U.S. as a place that I was going to really come this way. I wanted to go to Europe, actually. One of the, part of the goals of uh, doing occupational safety is to reach uh, vulnerable uh, workers and, uh, and agricultural workers. They are the main target. You know, they are undocumented workers who we have a, a no, not a few thousand, almost a hundred thousand people that we have in the in the United, in, in New York working in the, in the, in the agriculture and in dairy farms. Uh, uh, right here in, the, in our community.
A rising number of left-wing mayors in sanctuary cities across the country pledging to fight both the law and the president-elect. The directive signed today by President Trump include revoking federal funds from so-called sanctuary cities, which are said to protect undocumented immigrants. We block the funding. No more funding. We will end the sanctuary cities that have resulted in so many needless deaths. That probably is the biggest fear-mongering aspect of the executive orders. What it states in the executive order, and I'm paraphrasing, but essentially that um, the, the federal government can withhold funding to municipalities, whether it be a town, a village, a county, city, state, can withhold funding from that government entity if they have identified themselves as a sanctuary community. So there's things that people need to understand. There's case law that says, the withholding of funding needs to be germane to the funding that is identified. So for example, if, you, if the funding is related to housing or um, foster care, child care, that is completely irrelevant and unrelated to someone's immigration status. It's very limited what financial impact they could have on communities that have said, we're going to protect our local law enforcement and we're not going to do your job for you. This is a Fox News alert. A federal judge in San Francisco has struck down President Trump's executive order targeting sanctuary cities. Mayors nationwide reacted with outrage to Mr. Trump's plan to cut off federal funding to sanctuary cities, calling the move unconstitutional. It sounds like New York City gets $8.8 .8 billion in federal Fun. We believe the executive order is vague and in some ways contradictory. By the way, it's quite clear the Supreme Court under Justice Roberts in 2012 came with a decision that said it is inappropriate for the federal government to attempt to take funding broad brush away from a state or city because of broad policy matters. Open the door for new leadership, and the leadership that have the, uh, I don't know if there's another word, the gut to, uh, to bring up the changes, and because uh, we, we are surrounded by a lot, of, a lot of politicians that they need to go. They need to go home and retire and give, and give uh, uh, the new people with have the new ideas, the new energy, okay, to create new things, you know. And, uh, all politics is, didn't work. That, that's the problem. Yeah. And I, I'm old, but all politics is not, it's not working. So you know, we need something new. The idea is if we can have enough counties passing the resolution and enough education so that people really understand what it is and what it isn't, we can then encourage the state to pass the resolution, ultimately ending up creating a welcoming state. And if enough states do similar actions, well then that's a profound message, that this is the culture that we represent and that we support and that we honor here in the country. So it's one step at a time. Having it pass here in the county and doing it in a way that could create bipartisan support is the first baby step in the process. Ahora que hago si yo ando deportado me han fusilado 20 veces en el corazón con la mente 
te echa pedazos y los pies to han pollados. Ahora qué hago si yo ando de puerta? Ahora qué hago si yo ando de puerta? Y los niños me preguntan dónde estoy. Cuando llega dar y a casa, cómo voy a regresar? Ahora qué hago si yo ando de portao? Dime Dios que estoy pagando pa pagarlo. Yo qué debo? Crimen nunca cometí. Tú me diste cuatro niños, yo soy papi para ellos. Dime entonces qué quieres que yo haga aquí. Si me cruzo por el cerro está la mafia. Si me agarran seguro me matarán. Pierdo, estoy sin agua. O la migra me alcanza. Si no cruzo, soy cobarde, mal papá. No hay vergüenza que yo ya no haya pasado. Yo a todo estoy dispuesto a soportar. Yo por ver a mi familia hasta la vida daría. Por el cerro voy a tener que cruzar. Por el cerro voy a tener que cruzar. Por el cerro voy a tener que cruzar. Cerro, voy a tener que cruzar.